Hello, I'm Estelle Bailey, the Chief Executive of the Berkshire, Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire Wildlife Trust. Welcome to the annual review for the last year of our work. And despite it being a really, really hard year with COVID, we've made some fantastic progress, which we're going to tell you about today. Last year we have bought two new nature reserves which have added to our suite of nature reserves. Um, fantastic meadows, Pixie Mead which is known to a lot of people. It's uh, an amazing floodplain meadow and Oncott Meadows in the Upper Ray area. It's a traditional hay meadow and these sites are massively important. We've lost 97% of our hay meadows since uh, post-war years and it's really important that we buy these to, to restore them and, and safeguard them for the future and put them into recovery for nature. Chimney Meadows is a, a massively important nature reserve for us and we've been doing a lot of work there over the last year. The plan is to restore floodplain back to its natural functioning self and to open up fish passages and enabling fish to move back up to their spawning grounds um, and the, the river floodplain will act as a floodplain again and many species I hope will return including lots of wintering wildfowl to the area. Beyond the work at Chimney Meadows uh, we work with a, a, a range of landowners across the three counties to advise them on how to manage wildlife better on their land. Um, but our nature reserves are very much part of the, the hub of some of those connections that we have with uh, local landowners. Uh, so they are reservoirs, our nature reserves are reservoirs of, of biodiversity to spill out into the landscape. For the last year, we've been working with West Berkshire Council, advising them on how to best manage their road verges that they look after for wildlife and very specifically for pollinating insects. It's been a great project and we see these as pollinator highways, so parts of, of, of the countryside almost that we try to bring to life uh, to, to link up to the wider landscape. Over the last year we have launched our new landowner advisory service which is a service designed to work with private landowners. It's a paid for service where people come to us to ask us advice on how to best manage their land for wildlife. And we've also launched Future Nature which is our ecological advisory service alongside that. Which means together we're doing more for wildlife so it's not just about us managing our nature reserves. It's working with more people in the wider countryside or in urban areas to do great stuff for wildlife. A large part of what we do is around influencing others and particularly MPs and those who are in positions of power, key decision makers, to do the right thing for the environment. And to think about it, it has to be at the first and foremost in their mind that they think about nature when they're making these big decisions. So Oxford to Cambridge Expressway, uh, we fought that successfully and, and that's gone away for now. But we've got the growth arc which is you know, worrying. Uh, with the plans that we've seen for that don't really take into account the full impact on the environment. So we're here to stand up for wildlife. On HS2 we've been working really hard over the last year, particularly with our local MPs to shine a light on the massive issue that HS2 is causing, the destruction, uh, a development on that kind of scale, is inevitably going to have on the local environment. So we know that our MPs are listening. Well, I think the most important thing to remember about BeBout is that it is members, you know, it's got tens of thousands of members in my constituency around Oxfordshire and they are the ones that drive what BeBout does and what they are doing is promoting what I know local residents really care about especially in this pandemic how many of us have discovered the beautiful countryside that was on our doorsteps all the time and BeBout is at the forefront of fighting for that wildlife so I think it's incredibly important that they do what they do and I thank them for the way that they do it because they run incredibly successful campaigns they were absolutely pivotal in getting the Oxford to Cambridge Expressway cancelled um, and they work with us really well so I thank them for all the work that they do uh, to help me as an MP but our entire community protect our incredible wildlife. 
I, I think they're a wonderful organization uh, that are deeply involved in Buckinghamshire with protecting uh, nature, biodiversity, actually protecting some land from development. And it's great that they're looking to actually buy a big parcel of land to protect it uh, and turn it into wildflower, uh, wildflower meadow uh, and a haven for, for local nature. And if it wasn't for groups like uh, Bebout, then I think we'd have lost a lot more land to, to housing, to other commercial uses by now. So a big thumbs up to them. I think the work they do is fantastic and I'd urge everyone to get out and where they can go and support them in person at places like College Lake in my constituency, get out there and do it. It's not just our MPs, it's our volunteers too. So we have over 300 wildlife ambassadors now championing our work and standing up for wildlife across our three counties. This is Langford Village Community Orchard and we're here just a few minutes from Bicester Town Centre. We are teaching people how to scythe. It's a fantastic uh, you know, traditional countryside management skill. Um, it's, fan it's a fantastic community task. It's great being here in the outdoors. It's, it's, it's just super for people's health and well-being and it will give people the skills to enable them to manage the site in the future. It's a fantastic thing to do because Biba are the experts so they know what needs to be done and because their sites are managed so fantastically they can apply that in the community to, to our sites that need caring for because often councils are keen to have grass as amenity grass and they don't necessarily understand about cutting at the right time of year, letting those wildflowers seed etc. <laughs> Of our visitor centres closed during the pandemic. Obviously, everybody had to just pack up and go home. We had to furlough staff, which was uh, really, really sad to do at, at the time. Uh, so we reached out to people virtually, and it was it was great actually in some respects because it really pushed us into thinking very differently and connecting with people in a very different way. Really accepting that everybody needs connection with nature. Um, we wanted to get into people's living rooms, so the best way to do that was to go digital, uh, which we did. And it worked really, really well. So we had loads of people visiting our website, loads of people engaging through Facebook and all of the other social media. Hello, and a very warm welcome to the first in our series of wildlife gardening videos. We all want to do... Our, our education team went digital too, so they're able to reach children in their front rooms which was fantastic so they still were able to get that experience that they would have done coming to the classroom so that was fantastic. Hello year ones from Eaton End my name's Lynn and I work for the local wildlife trust we're going to be and we had the best year ever for 30 days wild which was the national wildlife trust campaign which is about engaging people every day throughout June record numbers of people joined in and it was fantastic. <laughs> reached the end of our current five-year plan, be part of nature's recovery, and we've achieved some incredible things over the last five years. We now have more members than we've had in the history of, of the Wildlife Trust, which is absolutely phenomenal, uh, given the pandemic as well. We've connected with hundreds of thousands of people. They've engaged with us, engaged with nature, um, and hopefully taken something away with that for the future. And we have more land that we're managing for wildlife now than ever before. So we're up to 86 nature reserves, which is incredible. So some 2,600 hectares of land altogether. And beyond that, we're doing more work in the wider countryside. That was a big part of our strategic plan, was a push beyond our nature reserves into the wider countryside. We've engaged with 625 landowners over 76,000 hectares of land, which is incredible. And to think that we've influenced that land for nature, for the future, is amazing. We can't do this alone and I want to say thank you to all of those we've worked in partnership with over the last year to deliver our work. And a special thanks goes to our volunteers and to our members and those who've given us money to deliver brilliant work that we've done over that time. So a massive thank you to everybody who's been involved in our work. Well, it's time to look forward to our new strategic plan and it's called Wilder, more nature everywhere. So the plan 
is seeking to put nature into recovery by 2030. So we've set a target, an ambitious target, and it has to be ambitious given the state of nature uh, that we have across the three counties and across the UK and in fact across the world. The target is 30% of land well managed for nature by 2030 and also we want to connect more people to nature than ever before. Nature and climate are in a crisis and we can do something about that locally but we have to engage with local people and work in partnership with others to make that happen. And that is the vision that we have until 2030. It's a huge challenge but with your support we can have a wilder Berkshire, Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire where we can all live and thrive together with nature. Yeah.